All right, guys. Sorry for the shaky camera for a minute there. Just getting everything framed up. Hey, hey. All right. So maybe working on this. I worked on this earlier. I don't know if any uh, anybody watched the stream earlier. Is still around. But I sketched him out. Worked on some thumbnails of him first, and then sketched him, and then started doing some of the inking, and uh, show you the thumbnails I got here earlier that's where it started and so I'm now inking the main piece <clears throat> drawn Zuckus this bounty hunter from Star Wars um, don't really know a whole lot about him oh hey thank you thank you I appreciate that a lot and uh, yeah thanks thanks everybody for coming I already got a bunch of people here that's great fantastic well I hope you hang out I hope the video quality is not too bad for you I uh, did some research on the autofocus issue, and I guess there's no way to change the settings on my iPad, at least uh, not without downloading some other app, which I'm going to look into, but I haven't done yet. Um, so it may autofocus from time to time, because like my hands are in the way, or I'm dropping stuff. Um, and I'm sorry if that happens, but uh, I'm going to try to you know, keep an eye on it and keep it to a minimal, um, so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And so I was drawing from reference when I was doing the thumbnails in the initial sketch uh, for this guy. This is a bounty hunter from Star Wars. And uh, I'm not using reference now. So I kind of embellished his design a little bit. But I uh, wanted to kind of keep it fresh and keep it a little bit more uh, spontaneous. And um, for those of you... For those of you who are new, who haven't watched me stream yet, I've done like two today. Today is my first day. But uh, for those of you who have not watched me stream before, I've got my iPad off to the side, like just in my peripheral vision. So if you guys are commenting and stuff, I may not see it. I am going to look up from time to time and see if anything pops up. If I ask any questions or anything, I'll look up to see if you guys are commenting. But if you have a question or something, and I'll, I'll like, when I need to like rest my hand for a second and take a break then I'll ask you guys if you have any questions and then you can comment then and I'll be looking at it but otherwise you can like keep spamming it <laughs> if you want um, just until I see it uh, if you weren't here last time uh, I'm, what I'm using to ink is a TWSBI uh, VAC 700 fountain pen that I've oh, yeah <laughs> spam that I've uh, I've ground down the nib a little bit to be a little bit uh, more scratchy and a little bit finer than the the stock nib. So I'm gonna hopefully finish inking this guy and maybe do some drop shadows. I want to get to the shading, so I'm gonna do some uh, diluted ink shading, uh, which I really want you guys to see. But hopefully it doesn't take me too long to finish all this line work. I'm almost done. Um, I actually do. There are certain gel pens I like. Uh, I don't like a lot of the. Uh, just straight gel pens, but um, some of the uh, what are the Pilot gel pens are really nice, like the Pilot G Tech C. It's not a straight ball uh, uh, gel pen, but it's um, a rollerball like hybrid ink. It behaves a lot like a gel pen. Um, okay, I got two questions. So to address the first one, some advice for using ink. Uh, that's like a really broad question, and I'll talk some about that. Like, I'm, I'll make that like the focus of kind of like this stream. I do like a lot of casual chat too, but as far as like talking about art supplies and stuff, I'll talk about like ink and I don't know if there's like generic like all around like this is what you should do while you ink, but because everybody's different. But um, I'll talk about like some of the stuff I do, and I guess some of the things I could recommend. Um, as far as like preferring fountain over gel, it's really just a, like, a, a matter of preference, I think. Like, there's no, some things are better for certain situations, but I think it's just entirely up to you and like what you like. Um, I use a, I try to use a little bit of everything just to like try new things and uh, stay versatile, but I tend to like fountain pens because they're uh, really fun to use. Like owning a fountain pen, they have like good weight to them. You know, you take them apart and like, clean them and stuff, there's like a little bit of like romanticism, I guess, with them, and like I'm a very tactile guy, so I like, you know, things that have a lot of like interesting moving parts and have like, like this is a heavy pen, 
you know, stuff that has, like, a good weight to it. Feels good in my hand. Um, nothing against gel pens, but I just like something that has a little bit more oomph. Also, gel pens tend to be a lot smoother than what I like. I tend to like really, um, like kind of scratchy pens that, like, grab onto the paper a little bit. Create, like, those nice angular lines. That's really nice. Um, this one is a vacuum fill, so it doesn't have a cartridge. You see it's got this huge ink reservoir. just fills straight from the bottle. Um, and I really like that because I, I tend to be very picky about my inks. And I don't like a lot of the, the stock inks because they're either, they're either not waterproof or they're too wet. Or, you know, there's something I don't like about it. I tend to prefer an ink that's a little bit more viscous, that doesn't, like, flow quite as freely. Just for the same effect that it it's, it's, creates a little bit more line variation. It's not as smooth of a line. Once again, that's just a matter of preference. Uh, the ink I use is a Sailor ink. It's Kiwaguro Black. And uh, it's it's a really nice ink. It's, it's pretty viscous. Um... And it will work with all fountain pens. Because like, you don't want to use India ink or anything with like a lacquer or a drying agent in a fountain pen because it will clog up your fountain pen. So I think it's important to you know try a lot of different stuff and find out what you like personally. Because you know someone giving you a recommendation is good, but at the end of the day, like you're going to get the most enjoyment out of using a pen that you like. Like, not, not one that you think is good, but one that you actually just enjoy using. You know, I know I, I myself and a lot of other people just like drawing with a, you know, good old big ballpoint. You know, it costs like six cents. You can pay like two bucks for a package of like 40. And I know a lot of artists that use those and don't want to use anything else. It's just what they like. And they create amazing artwork with it. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Now, having, a, having an expensive pen isn't going to do any more for you than any other pen. Unless you find that <laughs> your hand just takes those really expensive pens, then you might be in trouble. <laughs> I, I tend to like a lot of expensive pens, but I also have like a really severe guilt when I spend a lot of money on a pen. <laughs> like, oh, well, I could have bought, you know, food, <laughs> anything else. But yeah, I mean, ink is, you know, something that I think it takes, like, some getting used to. If, you, like, say if you are used to working, like, digitally or with other more forgiving mediums, ink is, can be unforgiving, uh, but it depends on how you look at it. I mean, like, you can, the nice thing about ink, the, the pros, that you get you know, a nice solid line. You get something that is, you know, depending on what ink you use, potentially waterproof or, you know, light fast or archival. Um, and I, at the same time, that can be a downside to some people because it's permanent. Like, once you put a line down, it doesn't come up. And while that's true, it's better to not worry about, you know, if I put this line down, am I going to get it back up? It's better to think, like, okay, well you know, where do I want this line to go? And think about it beforehand. So if you're worried about that, you know, sketching beforehand or, you know, practicing doing thumbnails or stuff like that can really help you. Um, also, you know, there's whiteout. Don't be afraid to use whiteout. Like, that's what it's for. And especially with, like, felt tip pens, if you white out, you know, a line you don't like, you can draw back over the whiteout. It's designed for that. And I white out stuff on my, my, on my artwork all the time. But, uh, yeah, I don't think there's, like, a right way to go about using any particular art product, nor do I think that there's any one art product that is better than the other. What I always tell people is just to try stuff. Try a lot of different stuff. Find what you like. And if you want to, like... There, there, there's a... If you guys haven't heard of it, jetpens.com, J-E-T-P-E-N-S.com. Uh, they have they sell a lot of great pens. Not only that, but they sell like sample packs, so you can go on there and look up like a a brush pen sample pack, and you can buy it, and they'll send you like five or six different brush pens to try.
Because sometimes, like, all the difference between, like, you enjoying your work and not enjoying your work can all be in the right pen sometimes. And I know that kind of goes against what I said, is like, there's, you know, there's one right pen, but I'm not talking about there's one right pen for everybody, but there may be one right pen for you. And until you, you know, finding that pen may give you significantly more enjoyment out of just the act of making art. And as I was saying last time, like, on my last stream, like, I was just rambling, like, people weren't asking me a lot of questions, I was just kind of, like, jabbering to myself, but, like, art for me, like, the whole purpose of it is, like, it's something I do that I enjoy. Like, I really just love it. And if I didn't love it, like, why would I do it? And so, like, finding a way, like, if you're frustrated with drawing, like, everybody gets frustrated. God, I know it happens. And maybe it's just time to make a change, like find find a new pen that you like, or like try a new paper, or a new ink, or, you know, like try drawing something that you don't normally draw. It can make all the difference. Like I was, I was honestly like just recently struggling over the last like week or so, just getting really frustrated with like, you know, I felt like I wasn't progressing, and that there, like my style didn't have character, or like wasn't, you know, typical typical stuff, like, it happens, you know, don't be afraid of, like, artist blocks or, like, identity crises, like, you can't figure out, like, what you want from your art, it can be hard, and it happens, and it's nothing to worry about, because, like, there are ways to get out of it, it's not like you're gonna, you know, be stuck, if you have an artist block, you're not gonna be stuck forever, you just gotta, like, it's like being stuck in a cave, like, you just gotta find your way out, and sometimes you gotta, like, claw and scratch and dig, but, like, you'll get there eventually, maybe the cave thing is a bad uh, metaphor, but that's kind of the idea, and, uh, like I've said before on my other streams, if you have any, like, questions or, you know, concerns or anything like that that, um, you aren't able to get across the chat or you don't want to get across the chat, you want to, like, talk privately or something, I don't know, uh, you can email me or hit me up on, like, Twitter or Instagram or Tumblr or whatever, my email is listed on my profile here on Paris Periscope as well as on my Twitter and Instagram profile, so, like, shoot me an email. Like, don't worry. Had some people, like, email and be like, you know, I don't want to sound needy or anything. Like, you don't sound needy. It's just like, you know, we can talk. Got some music on in the background. It's more... Oh, thank you. The music in the background is more for me. Sorry if you guys can't hear it. It's on my computer. It's not great quality. And I listened to the last, the first recording I did today, and it, the music. I was playing music then a little bit louder, and it came across really, really bad. So I'm not gonna be playing music yet. At least until I get like one of my nicer speakers set up or something. Because I have them, I just don't feel like moving them right now. Sorry. I'm gonna keep like moving the paper around too. Keep looking to make sure you guys can actually see what I'm doing. They've got like kind of like a jury rig set up right now. So I can't like really adjust because I'm filming on an iPad. I can't really adjust it really well. So I kind of have to like adjust my paper to be in the view. So sorry if I like am drawing out of the frame for a moment. Oh cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm pretty, like, I haven't really watched anybody stream. Like, to be honest, I'm, like, really, really new to this, so. Any, like, suggestions or anything, like I said, don't hesitate to, like, yell at me or whatever. I can take it. I love this dude's hands. He's got, like, the coolest, like, chunky two-finger gloves that are just, like, I wish I could draw everybody with, like, chunky two-finger gloves. I was talking last time about like how amazing the design is in Star Wars because this guy's a, a main character featured. I don't even know if he has any dialogue. Honestly, I haven't watched old movies in a while, but as far as I can remember, he's just like standing in the background in a couple scenes, and he just he basically just there to like look interesting, and he looks super interesting. I've always been really intrigued by him. And I thought it'd be fun to draw. Yeah, I was looking at it. I didn't know there was a way you could use the, like, 
computer to do it. I'll have to look into that. Um, but I was, I was like, raising it higher, and I, I found that it was out of focus, and you couldn't really, like, see what I was doing. And since I use, since I, like, do so much detail, I wanted you guys to be able to, like, see the nitty-gritty details. So I may try doing a stream where the, the camera is set higher to see if that works better. But I definitely don't want to move it around right now. So, But that's a good tip. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you, I just saw like that comment fading out. Could you post that one more time, please? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I touched on that last time. That I, I did mention that I was in art school at the... Oh, yeah, those dip pens. Yeah, I'll talk about, I, I, I might talk about those, too, in a little bit, just, just because um, I can rant about them a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I went, to, uh, I went to art school at the Academy of Art in San Francisco, and I went for three semesters. I did not finish. And I, I honestly learned a lot there, and, like, all the fundamentals were great. Like, all the figure drawing classes, those were really good for, like, helping to learn um, anatomy and stuff, and... Oh, nice, yeah, that's great. It's a, it's a great institution, and I honestly think it's just a matter of, like, you know, art school may not be for everybody, but... Um, I learned a lot while I was there. I met some really great people. I actually like made some connections that I still, you know, have today because of it. But um, I don't know. I mean, I kind of like life happened to me. Like, I uh, my wife got pregnant, and you know, I decided to take a break from school and stuff like that. And you know, I, I did learn a lot. The figure drawing, specifically the perspective classes, um, those were all really helpful. Because uh, they're like, you know, basic fundamental stuff that, you know, are are difficult to learn on your own. Not impossible, but maybe more difficult to learn on your own. Um, and are, are, are tools that I think, you know, most artists could really be, be helped by, you know, developing those tools. Um... Specifically, just, you know, getting experience drawing people, like, live drawing people uh, for, like, learning anatomy and stuff is, like, you know, not necessarily something that you can get anywhere else. I mean, you can take, like, classes at community colleges and, you know, they offer, like, ones that you can pay for to get that experience, but I got a lot out of that. Um, and like I said, you know, I think it's, there are, it, it also depends, like, if you're, if there's a certain profession that you want to go into like, animation, you know, like, a lot of places, like, a lot of the big animation studios, like, are really looking for somebody with a diploma and some education. Uh, yeah, was it worth it? I mean, if you, if, for the money, I don't know, it's expensive. I went to a pretty expensive school, and even those three semesters ended up costing me, you know, and it's, it's really hard to say, because did I learn a lot? Yes, I learned a lot. Did I learn, you know, my money's worth? I don't know if that's, like, a question that can be answered. But I would say that it was worth it. But, they are, yeah, they're very expensive. And, um, you know, there are cheaper ones. The one I went to is one of the, a, a particularly expensive one. But, you know, if I could go back now, like, travel back in time, I would tell myself not to go to art school. And that's just my, I'm not saying don't go to art school, that's just my personal experience, because, like, what I'm doing now, doing a lot of freelance work and doing a lot of commissions and stuff, I don't think I necessarily needed art school. Like, I could have gotten to where I am on my own, probably. You know, that's, like, a crazy hypothetical question that, like, you know, who knows, but... 
simply because of like the monetary aspect, you know, I wish I had that money back. But have I been drawing? I mean, yeah, pretty much. I mean, as mu as as far back as I can remember. I mean, as a kid, I loved to draw. You know, I remember being in like elementary school and like drawing like dinosaurs with like rocket launchers on them all the time. Just always taken to it. I've always been kind of like, you know, like a like an introvert. Like a, I'm just like someone who's in their imagination a lot, and so like drawing is like a way for me to like vent all of that internal stuff into the physical world. But uh, getting back to, I, yeah, I mean, so I'm, you know, I'm a. Oh, I just turned 26. I almost said I'm 25. Uh, but yeah, I've been drawing all my life. There were there was a there was there have been some periods that I've you know either like stopped drawing or like severely decreased the amount that I've drawn. And like the one thing that art school did do to me that was invaluable and probably the one reason why I I absolutely cannot say like I wish I never went to art school was because it like kickstarted it like kickstarted my. I guess like reinvigorated my my passion for art because I was at a, at that point in my life I was at a point where I was just like not drawing like you know other than the occasional like you know sticky note doodle and I honestly had no desire to pursue art but then you know that was actually when like around the time that uh, I met my wife and she was the one that encouraged me to do it and you know, between her encouragement and, like, you know, getting back into an environment where people were making art and people were passionate about art, like, that helped me get back into it. So I think that, you know, it's not necessarily tied directly to art school, but that was an invaluable experience for me. And it's hard to put a price tag on that. I think that if you're really serious about it and, you know, there's no doubt in your mind that, like, I want to be an artist, like, that's what I have to do, like, you have that drive... And a lot of people do. And a lot of people will find that drive. You know, so don't... I'm not saying, like, you, if you don't have that drive, like, you shouldn't be an artist or you shouldn't go to art school. But if you if you feel that way, like, if you feel like, oh, man, like, i got to be an artist, like, I have to, then go to art school. I mean, do it. Like, why not? You know, regardless of what you believe, you know, you get, like, if you have the chance of something, or you're passionate about something, like, don't wait to act on it. Don't wait to act on it. Because, like, the more time you spend pursuing your your passion, the more time you're you're spending getting better and developing your passion, and working to get yourself out there. Because I think that's, like, what one of the big drives for me is, like, you know, I love drawing, but I really want to, like, have my stuff in the world for people to see and, like, to share, you know, share my vision. Like, kind of, you know, just vent it out of my head and let people, like, look at it. It's, like, kind of a weird way to say it, but I don't know. Like, one of the bi biggest, like, most satisfactory things that's, like, ever happened to me was, like, printing my first, like, comic book. And this is, like, a little eight-page thing that I worked on with Hansel Moreno, who's a, like, wonderful guy. He wrote it. And, um... I drew it, it's just like little eight pages, and it was just, you know, seeing it in print for the first time was just like, oh my god, like, I made that. And there was like, you know, just like an intangible, inex unex inexplicable, sorry, <laughs> uh, like sense of pride that comes with that. And I think that's what, you know, that's like the, the reason why I do what I do. Or a big part of it, anyway. So, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of... That kind of covers it. Maybe I was, like, rambling a little bit there. Sorry. But, um... Yeah, dip pens. I know somebody mentioned dip pens a, a minute ago. Those are... You know... I've... I have some. I have them. I've used them. I've used them a lot, actually. I used to use them quite a bit, because... <laughs> That was that was back in the time I thought was like, oh, that's what le you know legit comic book artists do. Because I thought there was like you know something to be, something to like being authentic, which is you know I realize now it's kind of silly, but um, all right. So I just realized I was drawing out of screen. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, see, I told you it was gonna happen. I told you it was gonna happen. I'm just gonna like scribble this in right now though. 
But um, they're, they, they kind of have the same thing as fountain pens, where they're just like, they're an experience. You know, like, that's, that's how people used to draw with ink before fountain pens were invented. You know, they had started with the, the <laughs> you know, like the feathers that you see when people, like, dip the big curly feathers into the ink. They are actually sharpened quills, and they worked as pens because the ink sept, uh, seeped inside the, I don't know if that's a correct word, would seep inside the, the uh, hollow part in the feather quill and essentially work as an ink reservoir. And that's why they started using them. And then they started using them that, you know, they would have that ink reservoir and then they would add metal tips on them they would, so they would last longer. Because the thing about the quills is they... I, I've actually used a, an actual quill pen. Yeah, they're very small. And they, um... If you press too hard on them, they can split. They split really easy. And then it's ruined, you know, there's no way to fix that. So people would put metal tips on them too. And I think that's, you know, I may be like totally misquoting history here, so like don't actually take my word for it. But I'm pretty sure that's how the... Uh, the modern, you know, dip pens evolved um, into what you can buy now. And, you know, they have qualities that you can't really achieve with, with other medium, like being able to... Uh, <clears throat> like, there aren't a lot of fountain pens that have, like, super flexible nibs. Like, you can find, you know, nibs that flex on a fountain pen, but... The issue with those nibs is they're fragile, so you don't, they don't normally make them for pens that are intended to last a long time. And, uh, hold on, let me adjust the blinds really quick. I got blinds right by me, and I see they're causing issues with the light. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, since they're a little bit more fragile, they make them, you know, so that you buy it, and, you know, you're not upset about replacing it, because you don't have to replace a whole pen or buy an expensive seal nib. Um, but... I don't know, like, <laughs> um, excuse me, I got a couple of bubbles there, um, and then he said, um, 16 times, I don't like to use them because I'm accident prone, and when you're dipping a pen in the ink that often, in the ink, in ink that often, uh, I have a tendency to tip the ink over. And after ruining, like, two or three drawings that way, I was just like, uh, you know what, I don't think I can afford to do this anymore. I will doodle with them from time to time, just because it's kind of fun uh, to mess around with. And they're, like, really scratchy, with this, which is great. And you can get them, like, spit ink and stuff, which is, like, one of the things you can't replicate with a lot of other pens. That can actually be a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things is like... It's not for me. And, you know, I've seen people use dip pens that just do amazing things with them. Uh, one of the guys I follow on Instagram. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'll talk about comics a little bit, too. Uh, one of the guys I follow on Instagram, uh, I'm not sure if I know his exact, his actual name. I know his Instagram handle is Magenta King. Like the color king. Magenta King, he uses uh, dip pens, and he's got some, like, time-lapse videos up on his Instagram of using dip pens, and he just, like, he has some really awesome stuff. I mean, just really, like, amazing, like, flowy lines and stuff, and, like, he, you know, when he draws without sketching, it's, like, really impressive. So, you know, not saying that they're not a valid <laughs> tool, I just don't, <laughs> I, I'm not that, I, I shouldn't use them. It's just me. Oh, I missed that comment too. Sorry. And I'm I'm drawing, so I'm like looking at the paper. So if I miss something, go ahead and if I if I see it like fading out, I can't actually read it quick enough. Go ahead and repost it so I can see it. Or if somebody else saw it, then go ahead and let me know what it says because I want to answer you guys' questions and like kind of chat a little bit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's very true. And that's why that's why you know I'm always I'm always always always. You know, saying, you gotta try stuff for yourself. You gotta try everything, man, until you find what you like. Because, like, you may just, like, you know, watch this video and be like, oh, man, it looks like a lot of fun drawing with that fountain pen that he has, and then go out and get a fountain pen and, like, totally hate it. Be like, oh, why did, I, why did I do that? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it was actually some of my Instagram followers that suggested I start doing these. Get on Periscope, I said. 
What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like, I've gone... Man, I couldn't tell you how many times that I've, like, bought a pen and thinking... Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I post, like, those those six-second videos on Instagram and stuff, too, but I think those are just, like, not enough. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you. But, yeah, like, how many times I've bought a pen thinking, like, oh, this is going to be great, like, have an idea that how I'm going to use it, and, like, just totally hating it. Man, like, brush pens. I don't know what it is. Like... And again, it's one of those things, like, people do some, like, absolutely amazing things with brush pens, but they just don't, like, I don't compute brush pens. Now, yeah, I actually use them for quite a while, trying to, like, learn them, and try to say, like, I'm gonna try, you know, didn't, didn't, didn't really jive with me, I guess. I'm gonna hurry it up on this guy. I just got some like more pouches to draw. It's basically like if you wonder what it's like to be me, it's like, oh, uh, I'll just pretty much draw pouches. Like at any given time, you're like, I wonder what Merrick's doing right now. He's probably drawing pouches. Something just like totally satisfying about it. Yes, it is all about jetpens.com. They got some really great stuff. Like I said, that's where you can find like the the uh, like brush pen samplers and stuff like that. Oh yeah, you're right. Never. Like if there's empty space. Like if I don't know where to put somewhere, just it's gonna be pouches. Yeah, jetpens is great. They have a, a huge selection. The reviews are really helpful. Um, and what I really like about that site, actually, is they have, like, curated collections. Like, you can go on there and look, and you can see, like, collections of, you know, fountain pens, or they'll talk about, like, gray inks, or they'll talk about, uh, you know, uh, pencil lead holders, or, and, and talk about, like, all the, and, and compare the various brands, so you can kind of get, a, get an idea of, like, you know, before you buy what you may get, what you think you're going to get. Um... I'm just going to draw over all of that because I think there needs to be more than like a drop shadow back here to kind of break up the space between the gun and his roby thing. I'm just going to break that up a little bit. And I'll go over that with like some diluted ink to... Maybe I'll use a an, a the one brush pen I use. I don't actually use it like a pen, uh, but I'll show you. I'll probably use that for this. Oh but yeah, jet pens is great. I buy a lot of my. I actually I'm kind of a, a an asshole because um, I'll go on jet pens to research stuff and then go see if it's available on Amazon because I have Amazon Prime. I don't like to wait for stuff. And, and don't get me wrong, jet pens is actually uh, really good about. They're actually really quick with their uh, shipping. Like I think last time I ordered something, it was ex it, it was estimated to take 14 days, and showed up in two or three, or like over the weekend. Yeah, it was over the weekend, so it showed up in you know two or three business days. Um, so that was really great. But in general, a great website. I only go to Amazon just because I I don't like to wait for things. Like if I get a new pen that I'm excited about trying, like I want. It. Tomorrow, just obsess about it. I don't know. This is probably like really outdated buckle technology for Star Wars, but I'm sure they have like electromagnetic laser buckles or something. As you can tell, I am two things. I am a Star Wars expert and very sarcastic.
Oh, what's going to go here? Oh, you thought it was a pouch. <laughs> it was going to be a pouch, actually, but it's going to be like a canister. Your wife is wants you. She's outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. All right, guys. I'm actually. I was gonna take a break right now before I start the shooting. So this is pretty much done. But I got to run out for a minute, and then maybe I'll be back in a little bit. Sorry to cut this short. Thanks for tuning in, and I will get back on in a little while.